Hey, I'm Dina DeHillig. I'm with the Arts Council for CSUN, and it is that time of year where we are accepting applications for the 2021 Matadors Community Credit Union Student Project Award. And so this is the third interview that I've done in my series uh, talking to past winners. And today I'm talking to Hetty Torres. I just finished interviewing her, and she is an amazing artist and has such heart. And it was the first time a project was uh, so much larger in in terms of impact and sc not scope per se, but uh, in terms of what was going on in Los Angeles at the time, what was going on uh, in the rest of the country at the time. And Hetty really tapped into that. So when you're thinking of applying for this award, think about uh, what your project is and how it can apply to the community at large. Uh, and beyond. So um, let me just get right into it. Here's my interview with Hetty Torres. Hetty Torres, welcome to our interview. Um, hi, then Dana. Dina, sorry. Oh, pick one. I don't care. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here and to be part of your uh, podcast. Thank you for inviting me as well. Sure, sure. Um, tell me a little bit about how you first found out about the award and how you went about applying. Actually, uh, it was my first time that I got an award and a scholarship. Um, I try my best all the time to to you know to submit applications, but I never got them because I don't know. Probably I was uh, I'm not great in writing, but um, this time was different because it was actually offered and pushed by one of the professors that uh, some has. Okay. Um, uh, I don't want to mention the name because I, uh, to be honest, I forget about it. But um, <laughs> it was my first, um, it was my only class that I have with here. That's why I forget about it. But basically, what she did is to present the the project, and she said, "This is going to be a grading project, but you guys are gonna, you know, be have the opportunity to be part of an scholar, you know, to apply for the scholarship in which you never know that you can get the thousand dollars used." Write something mean, mean like meaningful, like something mean, meaningful for uh for the for season and how you, they will benefit um, from your uh, from your proposal and and it was more like an activity in which I will be uh, we wrote our proposal and we meet up with other two students in, and we actually uh, uh, correct each other's uh, proposal and at the end the professor actually. So our, the best proposals, and she correct them as well, and that's how we uh, uh, we I was able to you know submit the, this 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 proposal. That's amazing. I mean, that's the first time I've heard that. And, and so the whole the whole class was graded on. Yes. Ah, that's great. <laughs> um, well, you know, your project happened at a very very interesting, very challenging time in uh, Los Angeles, uh, as well as in the rest of the country. Um, tell me about what your project was and how it related to not just your fellow students, but to what was going on in LA as well. So um, basically, uh, my dissertation, dissertation thesis was about immigration and co commemorating the labor of all these uh, of the undocumented and DACA um, uh, immigrants in, the, in Los Angeles. And the, everybody was very skeptical because immigration is a very big topic. And I will just continue doing, you know, no matter what my professors will say about, you know, um, I keep, you know, continue with the topic. And uh, and I was thinking about how I can, like, you know, approach more the stories of my friends or the stories of DACA recipients uh, to, a, to a bigger spectrum. and. This uh, this proposal was an opportunity to uh, actually create that a platform and uh, and reach to different uh, um, uh, audience, as, as especially to the you know the um, uh, American white people who know who are not familiar with the stories behind each immigrant, and I wanted to um, personalize more that every story. And what I did is I proposed that if I win the scholarship, I wanted to have an exhibition in which I will be presenting videos and drawings 
of the subjects of all these DACA uh, DACA recipients in real and, and sorry and on season. And basically, I thought it was going to be an easy an easy project, but it was hard because I had to um, I didn't know a lot of, of like DACA recipients in really. I'm um, sorry. I don't know why I'm continuing. I know saying. what you're saying. <laughs> And um, season and and it was more like a friend referring to their friends, you know. Um, it took about four months to work on the project and finalize it with uh, an exhibition along with uh, other professors. And um, being a student and showing with professors was a big thing. And I I think that our councils made it happen because otherwise, a student with and a student with a professor uh, artwork will not happen in, in, in season. And uh, I really appreciate the art council who were actually very empathetic on regards to this topic, probably because they were not familiar with what was happening back then in 2017 when that we had um, our like former president been attacking, you know, especially my ethnic, my, you know, my people, which are Mexican and mm, probably and show them that he was wrong by providing the stories of these amazing human beings. Well, I can speak from my personal experience that, you know, in my mind, I I had no idea that there was even an issue, you know, mm-hmm. that, that there that there was that there was any cause for any DACA student or or young person to be concerned. Um, and then uh, I, I started working with Diana Pardo who is a mm-hmm. theater stage management student. And uh, through our mentorship, I was learning more about her and her experiences and her challenges. Uh, and so I think, I, I don't know if you found her on your own or if I had referred her to you, but um, she ended up being one of your subjects, which is yes. really kind of lovely. And uh, let me let me pop up this. Is that is that Diana in the in the upper left? Actually, those are um, other other of the participants okay. on the project. Diane uh, was actually captured in a video on the oh. video lab. Yeah, can you uh, talk a little bit about how you did that? Yes, um, basically the video labs was um, a and um, I remember that the year before in 2016, I was on home. Um, yeah, I forget. Um, Best Buy, and I was so captured by an iPad, an iPad Pro, and I'm like, I'm gonna buy it. You never know. Probably I'm gonna use it with R. You never and know. Exactly. <laughs> and I bought it, and it was a great investment because I realized that I was able to capture the process of making, you know, my drawings, and I was able to manipulate the drawings to see the process, and then. When you see the process disappear, you know, disappear as well. Like, you know, it was a lapse, time, time lapse of the drawing, then the drawing disappearing, mm-hmm. which means how um, it was like a more contextual uh, thing about how a president wanted to erase the, like the, the, the contribution of these DACA uh, recipients in the United States. Um, basically, was that pro- that was a project and from from the the project from some of the recipients i actually mm, paint them the that's that's why you saw those paintings yes that's those <laughs> yes so um i had to choose some of the of the of the subjects that i had all the participants of volunteers for the pro um for the for the daca proposal and paint them for my dissertation thesis and that was the result. <laughs> they're, they're beautiful. Um, you were saying earlier um, when we were talking off camera that this is you on the far 